Exploring Lin 4 and Lin 14 in C. Elegance. Oral Communication Assignment 1, Virtual Journal Club by Ben Catcher. So let's meet C. Elegance. C. Elegance is a free living, tiny little nematode. It only grows up to one milliliter, millimeter in length as an adult. And C. elegans is incredibly important to the field of biology because it is transparent and therefore it makes it very effective for eukaryotic genetic studies in the field. So what's this all about? The article that I had examined the LIN4 and LIN14 proteins in C. elegans. More specifically, the author set out to discover what the LIN4 product was. So the authors knew that the LIN4 product repressed the LIN14 protein in some way. So they set off to discover what the LIN4 gene product was, and they expected this product to be a protein. So that's important that they expected it to be a protein. Narrowing it down, the figure that I had to discuss from this article was figure 5A and figure 5B. So figure 5B is actually pretty straightforward and that is just the RNA control for the experiment above. And the experiment above was figure 5A where it showed northern blot results where northern blot was used to detect RNA from the LIN4 gene in wild type worms. So LIN, uh, sorry, this is figure 5A, figure 5B. So what did we figure out? Figure 5A, since we know that figure 5B is just a control, figure 5A shows that the LIN4 gene in wild type worms produces two distinct RNA products. So these two products, I'm going to zoom in again, are LIN4L and LIN4S. So LIN4L, where the L stands for large, and LIN4S, where the S stands for small, uh, and this is because LIN4L is larger than LIN4S, were the two distinct RNA products that came from the LIN4 gene. This figure supports the point, let me zoom out. This figure supports the point made earlier in the article that the LIN4 gene does not encode a protein product. And remember what I said earlier that the beginning hypothesis for these authors that were going to this experiment were that the product from the LIN4 gene was actually going to be a protein. That was their initial hypothesis and that's what they were researching here of what is the LIN4 product that represses the LIN14 protein. They expected that product to be a protein. Earlier was discovered in the article, so this was before figure 5, that the LIN4 product was not actually a protein, that did not encode a protein product. And figure five shows what LIN4 actually does encode for, which is a LIN4L right here and LIN4S right here, two distinct RNA products. So how does this contribute to the overall results? Later on in the article, these two products, the LIN4L and the LIN4S, were found to be partially complementary to a sequence repeat in the three prime untranslated region of LIN14 mRNA. So the untranslated region, the UTR of LIN14, was complementary to parts of LIN4L and LIN4S. This led to the observed LIN14 protein repression that was being observed in this article. So when the authors set out to discover what product was from LIN4 was causing the repression of the LIN14 protein, this is what it was, that parts of LIN4S and LIN4L, sequences from LIN4S and LIN4L, were complementary to the 3' prime UTR of the LIN14 mRNA. This was leading to the inhibition of translation. Big picture, what does this article do and contribute to the field of biology? So this article led to the first ever discovery of miRNA, which is a small non-coding RNA. We now know that LIN4L RNA product is actually pre-miRNA and that the LIN4S RNA product is mature miRNA. So 
So in conclusion, the big picture here is that miRNA can lead to mRNA cleavage or translational repression. And this translational repression is what we saw with the repression of LIN14 by the LIN4 gene product. Thank you very much.